NBA action to get into with limited playing time. Just 29 minutes before uh, Steve Kerr pulled Steph Curry. Curry scored 31 points, made five three-pointers, but the Warriors couldn't contain the T-Wolves perimeter shooting. Lost 114-110 at the target center. That loss drops the Warriors two games behind the Los Angeles Lakers for the number nine spot in the Western Conference. Steph only played 30 minutes in this one. Kerr gave his reasons after. Take a listen. We've put the burden of this franchise on his shoulders for <laughs> 15 years. Um, we can't expect him to play 35 minutes. we got five games in seven days on this road trip. So um, if you want to say that him playing 30 minutes instead of 32 is the difference in the win and the loss, I, I totally disagree with that. Every game matters. You know, we're inching closer to the other end of the standings that we never thought we'd be in. So... Nobody's going to wave the white flag and say, you know, you're, you're mailing it in. And if that means playing more minutes, then I'll be ready to do that. Hmm. All right, Shannon, hmm. where, where are you on this one? Do you agree with Kerr on limiting Steph's minutes? Hell no. Because as you said, yeah, you put, you put it on his shoulders for the last 15 years, but that's the expectation that we have for great players. What great players that we didn't expect to play, especially given the situation. I can see if you're the number one seed and you got two or three games, uh, uh, two or three game lead, you want to live in his minutes. But you're fighting for your play in life, not your playoff life, your play in life. And you're va and and, and uh, uh, the Houston Rockets are only one game back. They won eight straight, and you seem to be finding ways to lose these games. So I disagree with Steve Kerr. I and it seems to me that Steph Curry wants to play because he doesn't want to be a guy that, that misses the play in, misses the playoffs. I understand that last year they got bounced in the first uh, after they played the Lakers and they ended up losing. But I disagree with uh, uh, Steve Kerr on this one because that's the expectations that we have for great players is that they play more, they do more, and we expect more from them. He, he's doing a lot. He's doing a lot. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, Shannon. Okay. Can you drive a vehicle with rims with no tires? No. No. Well, can you, you can. can you, you, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you drive a vehicle with tires with no rims? No. No. You're asking, this is what Steve Kerr is saying. We're, his, you're, we're asking Steph Curry to be the rim and the tire. Sometimes the help need help. Damn it, he's doing his part. Steve Kerr is saying, can Clay Thompson, can CP3, can Draymond, can Jonathan Kaminga, can y'all elevate y'all game? Like, we look at all the greats. Every guy that didn't won the championship, whether it was Jordan, Jordan was the rim, damn it, Pippen was the tire. And, uh, LeBron James was the rim, Anthony Davis was the tire. When we look at all the greats, every great that was a rim, they had a tire. They had somebody that was going to help them. Now, what I will say this, what it sounds like to me is Steve Kerr is not in denial where they at right now, and he knows that his team is not that damn good. So basically, why should, why should I run my guy Steph Curry into the ground in the position that we're in, knowing that we're not going to make no noise anyway? He knows what a championship team look like. Damn it, he's been a part of four of them. So unlike you and these Laker fans, he's actually seeing the big picture. We just don't have enough. Hold on, wait a minute. When they beat the Lakers, every time they win a game, Steve Kerr comes out there, this team can make a deep playoff run as we have to get healthy. Every time they lose, now all of a sudden, the, the, the burden of the franchise has been on Steph Curry. You can't have it both ways, Perk. You can't say we can make a deep playoff run when you win, but all of a sudden you lose, and all of a sudden Steph Curry's playing 30 minutes. You don't get to have it both ways. It's Shannon, would you agree that if you were in Steve Kerr position, and look, I give Steve Kerr a lot of heat, but wouldn't you agree that this year for him has been exhausting? Having, having to deal with Draymond Green and everything that's been going on with him, his suspensions, you know, him being away from the team, dealing with Klay Thompson not being the best version of Klay, having to, to put him, move him to the bench and have him come off the bench, having to trust into a young fellow like Jonathan Kaminga, who could come off as being a bit selfish at times with his shot selection, but you don't want to pull the card from him because you want to keep his confidence high. Having to watch 
Your guy, Steph Curry, go out there night to night as one of the smallest guys on the floor, take this physical beating because bigger defenders are on him every single night, and you're watching your team, and it got to be exhausting. It it's is. It's exhausting. But that's how Steph Curry became Steph Curry. So what? You, Steve Curry thought he was going to have it like 2016, 17, 18, 19, 21. Is that what? 22. Is that what he thought? That it was going to be all peaches and cream for the entirety of his coaching career? He has the best win percentage in the history of the game. So, so how was it supposed to turn out for him, Perk? He don't want any adversity. He doesn't want any hardship. He wants it great all the time. I thought there has to be some adversity. I thought there was supposed to be some 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 rough waters here and there. Damn, Perk, you want it great all the time. You want it seventy-five uh, and sunny. Perk, you, so, Perk, that's called that's called coaching. Damn, no, no, you can't. Look, 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 but look, Shannon, Shannon, you know this, okay? Clay Thompson is is a future Hall of Famer, okay? Yes. You know this as being a a franchise guy. No, it is not easy to have those conversations with a guy that didn't help you build the dynasty, a guy that didn't created this dynasty with you and Clay Thompson. Now, going to my next point, this is what I'm trying to tell you. See, you, you're in denial right now. When it comes down to the Los Angeles Lakers, you are in denial. We're talking about the Warriors. Here, hold on, hold on, but let me get to my point. We're okay. sitting up here and, and we're watching the Lakers and they have shown us who they are. That's why they're in the nice spot. Steve Kerr is sitting up here saying, we are in the 10th spot. I'm looking at this team. I'm looking at this tough Western Conference. I'm looking at this uphill battle that we have to climb. And damn it, I'm not about to sit up here and run Steph Curry into the ground. That is but a smart move by a coach. And that has faced reality. To answer your question, that's not what he said last week when they beat the Lakers. He said they can make a <clears throat> playoff run. So was he lying then or is he lying now? To your second, to your first, to your original point, how many kids you got, Perk? I got four. You got four kids. At some point in time, you've had to sit down and have a conversation with them, right? That's called parenting because everything is not going to be going to the amusement park, getting cotton candy, and eating candy apples. Am I correct? That's called parenting. Coaching is not always about winning championships. Sometimes you have to have very difficult conversations with, with players that have been great for an extended period of time and they're not where they are. They're not where they once were. That's called coaching. So he doesn't get to say, uh, go ahead. And, and guess what else comes with coaching and parenting? Honesty. And that's what we're seeing out of Steve Kerr. That's why I brought up the rim and the tie. Because Steve Kerr is saying, basically, I need help. Steph Curry needs help. He does. Anybody that's been watching the Golden State Warriors could tell that, damn it, Steph Curry needs help. He okay. needs help. Unless, you, unless you're the Boston Celtics and the Denver Nuggets, every other team in the NBA needs help. This is not mutually exclusive to the Golden State Warriors. Come on with it. I got Shannon, more if you want it. Shannon, 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 listen. It's a lot of other teams right there that are knocking at the door. The Milwaukee Bucks are knocking at the door. The Phoenix Suns are starting to find they, they, they stride. They're knocking at the door. So it's not just night and day that the Celtics and the Nuggets are just that much better than everyone else. They the are. Pelicans are knocking at the door. They're not. So my thing again, you're the I first side person with to Steve say Curl. that, Perk. Perk, you're the first person to say that on the show. I feel like yeah, everybody I mean, has everybody has said uh, that the Nuggets. Said, yeah, that they're head and shoulders above everyone else. Steve and, A doesn't feel that way because he likes the Celtics as well. But everybody else feels like they're men amongst boys. No, and then especially when you look in the Eastern Conference, look at what the Milwaukee Bucks have been doing of late, Molly. Look at what they've been doing. Look how they went to Boston and competed, but look at the teams that they've been beating since the All-Star break. You get this Milwaukee Bucks team, that series against the Celtics is going seven games. But I'm saying people are not saying that the Celtics need anything. You keep saying that the that the, uh, Golden State needs something. Every team needs Stand something. The unless you All right, we got to go. Stand we got to go. Spy. To be continued.